people remember from the beginning, oh, it seems like Python's taking the lead now, coming in hot. Uh, it seemed like Python was everyone's favorite programming language on consensus, but uh, people, I guess it, it seems more similar now, Python, JavaScript, Java. Anyways, the point is that uh, we offer all of these programming languages uh, to run in our IDE. All right, I'm gonna jump to the next question. So do you use the code just sandbox with your students? Got three choices. Yes, a lot, yes, a little, or no. Okay, so some less, a little, some no. We're gonna show you a lot. Everything that we're going to be demoing today is from the sandbox. Uh, but the sandbox is also, it's the same IDE and same environment that is within the course. Uh, but the sandbox is often just a really nice way to like play around, try new things and uh, write code. So we'll do one more uh, question here. And this one's gonna be a free response. So what IDE features are most useful to you? Uh, this could be things that are in the code HS IDE that you like, uh, things that are in other IDEs that you've used uh, that you find useful. Uh, what are your favorite parts? And hopefully that'll give us a good sense of what we want to cover. Okay. Give everyone another minute or so. Wow, so lots of different features. Seems like people like using all kinds of different features here. Uh, and the good news is that we're going to show you as many of these features as we can and give you a demo. So if you're not sure what that is, or you can see that one of these features is most useful to one of the teachers here, and you may not be familiar with it, or you may not be using it, uh, we're going to try and give you a demo where we can see as much of this as possible. So people can get a sense of like where to find things, how to click around and get the best features uh, for your students. All right, um, so that poll is still open and we'll share out the results at the end too. So what is the CodeHS IDE? Uh, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. So it's essentially the place where you can write code, you can run code, you can do sharing and more. Where do I use the CodeHS IDE? So it's in coding assignments. Anytime you are taking one of the CodeHS courses and you have a programming exercise or example that runs inside the CodeHS IDE. And uh, that is the tool that is enabling those programming assignments to be run and embed within our courses. Uh, it's also available in our CodeHS practice tool, uh, which you could find at codehs.com slash practice. If you haven't checked that out, I uh, highly recommend trying that out. We have practice problems that are all auto-graded in several different languages. Uh, and it's in the sandbox, which is essentially a free form environment where you can build and create and do whatever you like. So we're going to be focusing a lot on the sandbox in this session today. Okay, so that's my intro. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Andy and Andy is going to give everyone a rundown and uh, show everyone uh, lots of the tools and features uh, starting with the sandbox. All right, hi everyone. Like Zach said, my name is Andy. I'm a software developer at CodeHS. I'm gonna be taking you through a lot of the features with the IDE through the sandbox. Um, as a software developer, I love the sandbox in CodeHS. It's a great way to get to test out programs, try out cool ideas, and then share them. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is walking you through creating a new program in the sandbox. And then from there, we'll explore the IDE and talk about a lot of the features that it has. So I'm right now at my sandbox page. That's at codehs.com slash sandbox. And you can always access it from the top bar here. And I'm just gonna create a new program. Uh, we had a lot of Java teachers. We had a lot of Python teachers. I'm gonna go ahead and create a Java program. 
Um, so let's do a Java demo. And you can see that we have all these different languages to choose from, a bunch of different versions of Java, JavaScript, Python. We're just going to go with Java main just for a pretty straightforward example. So this is going to take us to the CodeHS IDE. Um, we're going to talk about kind of how the IDE is laid out at a high level and then jump into some of the more specific features. So you can see that it's kind of split up into different panes. In the center, we have the code editor. That's where we're actually going to be typing. You can see that we have syntax highlighting to highlight keywords and kind of draw the eye to the important parts of the program. You can see that we match up the brackets so that it's easy to navigate in your program. We also, on the left side, have the file tree and the settings tab, which we'll get into more. And then on the right, we have the output of the program. So if our program produces any output and we run it, that'll show up over here on the right side. We also have the docs tab. The docs tab is where we put all the documentation that we've written for the language, including code examples. So if I wanna try out something like writing a method or using user input, I can just copy and paste the relevant pieces right into my program. We also have the history tab and more on the right side over here. Um, we're not going to be able to go into all of these tabs just because we have a lot, um, but you can see that, for example, in the history tab, we keep track of every change that's made to your program every time you save it. Um, and that's useful for a couple of different reasons. So say that I, you know, somehow irreversibly break my program, right? I, uh, I try to run this and I have a syntax error. I don't know how to fix it. I can use the history tab to go back and find the last version of my program that worked restore from there, and suddenly I'm able to, to run this working program once again. The next thing that I want to talk about is some of the error messaging that we have. We give error messages that are coming directly from the servers where we run our code. Um, and we also offer syntax highlighting that will show the line that the error is occurring on. So we can see that on line five, we had an error. We are missing a semicolon. I can just add that back in and rerun it. The different panes of the IDE can be resized to draw focus on different parts of your program. Say I just want to focus on writing code for now. I can close the file list. I can close the output and just think about my code. But then maybe if I want to present this program to students, I just want to focus on the output. I can resize that. So that's the primary part of the IDE that's displayed. The environment that the code is executed on, our code servers, is a real replica of you know, anywhere that you would run a, a piece of software on your own machine. But the advantage is that we take care of that for you. So you can run a Java program, a Python program on a Chromebook. Um, you can also run Java on your phone, which is a thing that I love. Um, so I've just opened up the CodeHS IDE on my phone and I can run a Java program that produces a graphical output just like this. Um, because we're taking care of actually evaluating the code, what you get is a really you know, true to life environment where you're able to execute Java just as a professional software developer would, but you don't need to install any packages. You don't need to manage giving your students access to the command line, anything like that. We take care of that for you. The next thing that I'm excited to show is debug mode. This is something that we've added recently and is currently available in Java and Python. In the settings tab here on the left, we have a switch for entering debug mode. What that lets us do is step through our program line by line, which can really help us understand what our program is doing. So I'm going to set up some code here. So I'm going to say that I have a number that's equal to five. I'm going to add one to it. And then I'm going to print out the value of that number. So what I can do is first I'll just run it, make sure that my program works. Great, now I'm gonna enter debug mode. Now, when I run the program, it looks like I just gotta step into it. There we go. We have syntax highlighting that shows exactly what line we're on and we can inspect the variables at every point. So I can step to the next line and one by one, I can move through this program, see exactly how the program is executing. This is really valuable for something like control structures. Say I had a for loop and I wanna see how many times this for loop executes. So maybe I have uh, a for loop like this. If I wanna see exactly how the program steps through this for loop, 
I can just keep stepping through and count exactly how many times this for loop runs. One, two, three, and then we hop out. That's something we're really excited to be introducing soon. That's gonna be in Java and Python. That's currently in beta and we're gonna be opening it up to even more teachers. The next thing I wanna show is some more of these settings that we have in the settings panel on the left. So you can see that we can change the font size of the editor. So something like this where I'm presenting to teachers or if you're presenting to your students, I wanna really show the code so that they can see it from the back of the classroom. I can bump up the size of the font. I can close the panel on the right. So we're just looking at code. We don't need to worry about what's happening when the program runs. Conversely, we can make it so the output is the focus. We can make that bigger and then change the size of the output font so that that's very clear to everybody. We have a couple more settings here, and these are ones that are kind of useful for customizing how you want to write code. You can change the theme of the IDE, which gives you a different color scheme. So we have some light modes and we have a couple of dark modes, depending on your preference. We also have settings for wrapped lines. This is useful you know, if you're in an HTML program or if you're printing out really long lines, it's a useful way to make sure that the lines are continued properly. So another way that this might be useful is if I had a, a much smaller screen, I could just turn on the wrap line setting and suddenly, even if I have a really long line, I'm able to continue writing it without a problem. All right, so that's all I wanted to show for the settings in the IDE. Now I'm gonna show you some of the more interesting features and the more powerful things you can do with the IDE that you might not know about yet. So what I wanna show now is a bit of how you can use the IDE with existing programs you have, existing curriculum you may have written, or curriculum that you may be getting from something like the College Board. So Grid World is a really cool program. The Java teachers here probably know about this. Um, it's one of the APCSA labs. Grid World is a pretty big program and it has a lot of files. We don't really expect you to write all those files. So what you can do is use a jar file, compile Java program and upload that into your program. So I can click new, upload, browse my computer for any jar file I want. I have a grid world jar right here. Open that up and add it to my program. So it doesn't display because it's it would look like garbage. But what we can do is we can now compile and run our Java program with that jar file. So I can go ahead and run this. And suddenly I'm off to the races with grid world, a really fun and exciting program. Uh, your students don't have to write everything. They don't have to copy and paste every file in. And you can use jar files that you may have compiled in the past for another class, jar files for things like Picture Lab, jar files that were distributed on, online. This is a really great way to use the code HSIDE with existing programs that you may have made. Jars aren't the only thing that you can upload. Uh, you can also upload GIF files. You can upload images. This is a Java Swing program. Swing is a popular Java library for using graphics and images. And what this program is going to do is load a GIF file. So I can click upload, choose a file, and upload an image. I have just made a little GIF of Carol going in circles. I'll go ahead and upload this and add it. And now this GIF file that was on my computer is suddenly something that you can use in your program. You can go ahead and run this. Oh, I just have a typo. It's called Carol spin without an underscore. There we go. Okay, so you can also use uploads in other program types. Say you're making an HTML page. So let's go ahead and start that right now. Let's make an HTML program and we'll create a, a new home page maybe and upload some images to it. So we'll create a new program. This time it'll be an HTML program and everything's gonna look pretty much the same. It's still the same IDE. We use the same IDE for Java, for HTML, for Python, any programming language. So we'll follow the same steps in order to upload our images. What I'll do is click new, upload, and I'll choose a file. And I'm just gonna grab the CodeHS logo, upload that. Go ahead and add that. And it's now part of our program. I'll go ahead and copy the URL to use inside my web page and just add it as an image. And when I run this program, you can see that I have the CodeHS logo inside my web page now. 
So you can use the Code HS IDE to also continue developing programs that you might have written in another IDE, like Eclipse or Sublime. If you upload a text file, that'll suddenly just be part of your program on Code HS, and you can use that just as if you had written it in the Code HS IDE. All right. So next, I'm going to talk a little bit about sharing. So say I've made this HTML program. I'm really excited about it. I think that it's really cool. I think this is going to be the new Code HS. It's just a, a website that just has the Code HS logo, and I want to show people. Inside the sandbox, all of your programs will have the share button. When you click this, you'll be given options for how you want to share this program out to people. It gives you a URL. I can go ahead and copy this. And because I've set this program to be public and to show code, anybody can open this URL, view my program. They won't be able to save it, and they won't be able to edit it like they might if you were collaborating. Uh, we just had a session on Collaborate before this. If you missed that, you can go ahead and check that out. But they'll be able to see my program. I can also share just the output of the program by selecting App. This URL, we can go ahead and open this up in a new tab. We'll just show the output of running the program. So maybe I use the Code HS IDE to make a really cool game, and I just want people to see it running. I can go ahead and share out the app URL, and when somebody opens that up, they just see the actual output of the program running. So click Run, and the web page will load there. You can also share your program and allow other people to fork it. Forking is something that we've added to the IDE pretty recently, and it's a way that you can kind of build a community around your programs and interact with other Code HS teachers. Uh, your students can interact with each other, and there's a couple other interesting ways you can use this that we'll show. So programs that you create in the IDE, if they're public, can be forked. What that means is somebody can take your program and make a copy of it. It essentially you know, photocopies it, and then they have a version that they can make changes to. I'm going to show you the sandbox of the APCSA user. It's somebody that we've made on Code HS, and essentially we've uploaded a bunch of really interesting programs that essentially act as templates. These are all in the sandbox. This is at codehs.com slash sandbox slash APCSA. And you can see that there's a bunch of programs here that are kind of templates for cool things that you can do in Java. So I'm going to go ahead and open Explore an Image. I can see that's a Java Swing program, so it uses graphics. And we can see here, it'll open up the IDE. And this is somebody else's program. This is a program from our special APCSA account that just collects these cool examples. But this will open up. We'll go ahead and run it, see if it's the kind of program we'll like. And if we want to, we can fork it and use it for our own. So let's go ahead and connect here and run this. This is one of the APCSA labs. This is an adaptation of Picture Lab, which teaches students how pictures are stored. And I like this one because this is a picture of my dog that we use as the example. So it's always nice to see him here. Um, but say we like this, we're happy about this, this example, but we want our students to maybe do a slightly different version of it. What I'm going to do is fork this program, photocopy it, move it to my sandbox. I can make my own changes. To do that, you just hit this fork button right here click fork. Suddenly I have, oops, I might not have set this program up right when I was uh, creating this. It'll create a copy of it in your own sandbox. From there, you can make any changes to it, share it out to your students. This also works inversely. Maybe you want to set up some templates for your students to copy. I went ahead and created a folder here in the sandbox, which you can do just by creating a folder right here. And I've called it program templates. Maybe you want your students to you know, create a new program that uses the math in Java, in Java right? the math.py, math.power, stuff like that. You can create a program template and ask your students to fork it. So here's this program I've made. Um, you basically set up the, the starter code that you want, Eastern, that you want your students to work off of. Um, it can be pretty basic. You can write in comments that tell your students where they should fill things in and then share the link out to them. They'll be able to fork the program to their sandbox, and then you can view your student's sandbox and see what they did. So right, I just write the basic code that says, you should put your code here. Do something like use math.py to calculate properties of the sphere, area, volume, surface area, something like that. You click share, and 
you'll be given a URL to share out to your students. Any of your students can open this URL, fork the program to their sandbox, and then make a cool variation on this program. You can also share the URL directly from the sandbox. So here in the sandbox, I can click these three dots to the right and have a couple options for what I want to do with this program. One of them is copy the link and share that out directly to students. The last thing that we talked about in the previous session was collaboration. Um, this is something we're really excited about and it's a really cool way to use the sandbox. Your students can collaborate with each other. You can also invite your students into your program to you know, maybe work along with you in a demo. To do that in the sandbox, you'll click share in one of your programs, choose the collaborate tab and share a link out. Before I do this, I wanna show one other thing that you can do in the sandbox, which is embedding a program. Our IDE, just like it's meant to be run on phones like I showed, is also meant to be embedded into other pages. So say I wanted to, on my CodeHS homepage, show off a really cool Java program I made. Um, I think this one's a little bit cooler, so I'm gonna embed this one. So I'm gonna click share, and in the share modal, I will choose embed. This gives me a piece of HTML code that I can copy. I'm just gonna click copy right here. It'll be copied to my clipboard. And then inside my website, I can paste that directly. So it just pasted it right there. Now, when I run this program, I will actually have the code HS IDE inside my website. So it's loading. There it is. So the large IDE that we saw before is now compressed right here. We'll be able to run our little GIF of Carol running in a circle. And as you can see, the fork button is here as well. This is a way that you can share your programs that you've made on your website. You could embed these into an article that you're writing. This is something that we do. We compile a lot of our IDE programs into tutorials just to share them out and build a community around the cool programs that we're making. So I know that a lot of you might have been in the Collaborate session previous to this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share out the Collaborate URL and just add some new files here so that teachers who are maybe Java teachers can leave their mark in the Java file. If you're a Python teacher, go ahead and leave your mark in the Python file. Um, what else do we have? Maybe if you teach web design, you can uh, write some stuff in the web design file. But I'm going to go ahead and send this URL to the chat and anyone can join and start to uh, collaborate on this program. You know, this is something that we'll probably share out afterwards. So if you just wanna like, I don't know, put, put a cool example from your class or, or just, yeah, leave your mark that, that you're here. And maybe try embedding a sandbox program of your own uh, from your sandbox into this website. So I'm partial to Python. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a great big marquee that says Python rules so that everybody knows. And I'm gonna go ahead and set up some links so that you can all access each of these different pages. So again, if you're logged in, you should be able to fork this program. If you decide that you want to bring this back to your classroom, you want to make a site like this where all your students can kind of leave their mark, embed one of their really cool programs, this is a great way to do it. You can add a new page for every one of your students, have them embed some of their favorite IDE programs that they've made. I know that there's a lot of students out there who are making really cool programs and want to share them. This is a great way to do that. Um, so your students can make a program in the sandbox embed it into your like web page for your, your, your students and uh, run that. So it looks like some people are uh, embedding programs already on the table. Yes.
It looks like somebody embedded a P5JS program. That's a type that we haven't talked about, but we're going to get to that in a second. So this looks awesome. All right, so I'm actually going to hand it back over to Zach. Zach's going to talk a lot about of our about a lot of our programming languages. I don't think it's going to be possible to get to all of them because of how many we have, but we're going to try our best. Um, all right, thank you so much, everybody. This has been so much fun. All right, awesome. Thanks, Andy. People feel free to uh, keep posting um, their updates to the website. I think it's going to be a real winner and go viral. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to show everyone we made a folder uh, called the lightning round, which is showing an example from almost all of the programming languages and types that we offer. So people can get a sense of the wide uh, range of things that you can run in the code HS IDE. So I'm just going to do a real quick demo showing you all the different languages. And if you miss something, these links will all be sent out afterwards. So here we go. First, Carol. So this is an ultra Carol program uh, where we set up the worlds and you can have Carol run uh, and change colors. So this is a really fun one. Uh, all of the Carol programs are available in JavaScript, in Java, and in Python. And with ultra Carol, you can do the fun uh, painted by numbers. OK, uh, this one is a JavaScript console program. And we're showing a new feature that is going to start rolling out pretty soon, where the input uh, that you ask is uh, something you can type in line instead of just popping up. So this is a program that says how many rolls, and I'll do about 100, and then it'll show, cool, here are all the randomizer rolls. Uh, this is a P5.js program. So P5.js is a JavaScript library uh, that is really popular with making art and making visualizations and graphics. So this is a cool animation of a flocking behavior uh, that shows a bunch of uh, dots as if they're birds. All right, this uh, is an example of we offer block coding in our sandbox. And this is a special program type that allows you to make music with block coding. So you can see that I've got blocks dragged in here. Uh, you can change the tempo, you can set colors, you can add measures, uh, you can upload files and check boxes for beats. And I'll go ahead and play what this sounds like. So it's a really cool way for beginners to get into coding, try exploring it related to other topics like music, and make some really creative uh, programs and experiences. All right, uh, so this is a Python 3 program. And this one is an example where we're reading a file. So you can see over here in our file tree, I'm looking at main.py. But if I switch to example.txt, uh, then we can add some text to this file. So here I can say, Hello, Zach. And then I'll rerun this. And there you go. It reads the file and prints it out. So you can do uh, all kinds of Python programs, including uh, file reading. All right. Uh, we also have Turtle. So this is a fun uh, Turtle program. We're drawing lots of circles and creating a really fun visualization. Uh, I also set the speed to zero. Great tip for uh, making trail programs. So you can make it go really, really, really fast. All right, so this is a Python 3 with tpinter program. So this allows us to do graphics programs in Python. Uh, we have a couple of different versions that let you do graphics in Python programs. Uh, but this one will load in an image uh, that's bagel and it will display it on the screen. So just like Andy was showing before with the uh, Java program where we can upload an image, we uploaded an image here. And uh, then in our main program, we are referencing it and creating an image on the Python 3 Canvas. To extend it even further, we also have a Pygame type. So not only can you do images, but you can make games in Python, uh, which are interactive using the Pygame library. So I'm running this one. and this is, I'm controlling it with the arrow keys moving left and right. And then if I hit up, it'll jump. And you can like build a game. Uh, game I'm apparently not very good at. But lots of fun things you can do uh, with Pygame. Uh, we have another uh, P5.js program. This one's a fun one that I really like uh, as it draws a random donut. 
uh, using some randomizer and some fun graphics. So if you run it a bunch of different times, you'll get a bunch of different kinds of donuts. So a great way for students to uh, express themselves artistically and build different types of uh, creative programs. Uh, this one is another JavaScript graphics type. So this is the type in our main intro uh, JavaScript course that we teach. And uh, you can do lots of different graphics and animations. So here is a snowing scene uh, in honor of it snowing like two days ago in Chicago where I am, even though it's late April and should be done with that. Okay, uh, here's a Java program. So just to highlight that you can define classes, you can change the main class that runs, and you can do all sorts of subclasses in here. This has uh, many different files with types. So I'm gonna run this one, and it's essentially uh, running my shapes program, which is creating some shapes. One's a generic shape, uh, and then it prints the two string for it. So you can see I'm a shape. Uh, and then this one creates a rectangle, and this one uses I'm a rectangle. Uh, and if we were to dive into that, you can see that shape is the generic uh, class. And uh, if you do rectangle, it extends shape. Uh, and then it would be a shape type of rectangle. So that's why it knows how to print itself as a rectangle. And it has an area uh, that I can figure out based on the width and height. So you can do all sorts of uh, Java programs like this. Okay, continue enlightening. Uh, C++. So we run C++. Um, this one is a program that will run a, a depth first search. So uh, we just set up some edges in a graph and then ran uh, our depth first search uh, function and printed out uh, kind of the edges that it was looking at. Uh, this is a React Native program. So I'm gonna run the code here and you can see we've set up a switch so I can interact with it uh, and run a switch, but React Native is a JavaScript uh, based uh, library that allows you to develop both web apps and mobile apps. So this one, if you scan this QR code and you have the free Expo app, uh, you should be able to test this out and run it on your phone. So this, uh, our IDE integrates really nicely where you can write the code here, you can preview it, but then it can be a whole different uh, experience when students actually get to hold their program that they wrote. And if they make changes to it in their code here and it updates actually on their phone, that can be really exciting. And this is what we teach in our uh, mobile app design uh, course with React Native. We also have lots of different uh, uh, visualization tools. And this one is one where you can print binary. So this one I'm printing in hexadecimal. This one I'm doing binary. You can transition between. You can interpret it as colors. Uh, you can explore uh, all sorts of different colors here. So let's say I wanted to print some red or Oh, I guess, uh, there we go, some red. Uh, then you can figure it out using this color picker, but it's a great way for, especially CS principal students to understand binary and hex and how that relates to colors. All right, this one is a JUnit uh, example. So here we have a program uh, that will um, take our Fibonacci class, which we've defined right here as Fibonacci, where you can create a new Fibonacci and then get the results of the Fibonacci sequence for it. And it will use JUnit to run the tests that are defined in a simple test where we can create all these different test cases. If I run it, it will show which ones passed and which ones uh, failed. So you can see I've set up some examples here where these first two should pass. And then this one, I put the wrong number in so it would be failed. So you can see uh, right here, we've got three tests run and passed two out of three. Uh, so we can, uh, this is this program is available and people can port this one uh, to get a setup where you can build your own unit tests and import um, uh, your students code in or your code to test them out. Uh, some really advanced ones are if you want to actually just get a bash program type. So if you just want to poke around in our server that runs the code, then you can run bash uh, scripts and I ran echo uh, to run this, but if you want to type, for example, ls. It'll list all the files in here, uh, or you can do things like add a new file. So I can say like touch new.txt, and then I can say maybe echo hello into new.txt. And then I can cat it so you can see what's in there. So you can learn all sorts of things about um, evaluating programs on the server. 
And what's really cool about this is that this is actually how all of our programs run in Java and C++, in Python, et cetera. So uh, you can run lots of different programming languages and really explore it at a different level. We're really kind of out of time here. So I'm running out on the lightning round. So I'll just real fast. This is a scheme program that runs Fibonacci. That's a new programming language that we offer uh, pretty recently. Uh, this is a SQL one where I can insert into a database and then print out uh, some query results. So this is our Harry Potter database that we've uh, developed so you can print things out. We also offer JShell. Uh, so this program will actually just run uh, Java shell where you can start typing in a REPL uh, loop. So you can uh, explore and experiment with some quick uh, programming. So if I just want to run like 5 plus 5, it'll print out the results as 10. Same thing with Python. Uh, so this one is a Python 3 shell um, that you can do the same thing. So here, I'll try 4 plus 2, and it'll print it out. You can do way more complicated than that, too. And I'll end on this cool gra graphics one where you can do all sorts of types of uh, fun ray casting experiments. So this is, uh, that was the lightning round. <laughs> and uh, again, all the links are in here, and we'll share that out um, in the chat after. So. Since we are pretty close to wrapping up, um, we are going to uh, kind of finish everything up, but we have a coming soon section, which we'll send out after that shows lots of the cool tools that uh, we are adding to the IDE and developing uh, over the coming uh, weeks and months.